Good evening everyone. You remember this? This is the cardboard only worm bin that was set up at the same time as the teabag only worm bin just to see how they got on after a period of time. Now they were stored in the same place. In fact this bin was stacked on top of the teabag only worm bin. They were stored outside so same as with the teabag only worm bin they've um, been outside during winter so that will have had an effect on the population but you can see straight away that um, there's plenty of casts, worm casts all the way through the bin the shiny cardboard there is from a cereal box and this is why you'll hear people say not to add laminated or shiny cardboard to your worm bins because they haven't really touched this at all whereas they seem to have been working away happily on the wet cardboard So this bin was started the same way. It had 30 worms. Um, there was more juveniles actually on this in this bin than there was in the teabag only worm bin when I set it up. Um, mostly cardboard and I think it was three handfuls of um, partially composted guinea pig bedding. So that's how it was set up and then it was just stacked on top of the teabag only worm bin and they were left to their own devices until now. So, seeing as I did the teabag only worm bin yesterday, I thought it would be a good idea to do this one today. So we can compare and contrast. And as you can see there, they're really just not interested in the shiny cardboard at all. Now this one is going to be an absolute pain to try and count the worms because any of the very small worms, as you can see there, they'll have got themselves in between the layers of the cardboard, which is a favourite place of theirs. And it's going to be an absolute nightmare to try and remove them and count them. You can see the layers of cardboard and that's held together with a glue which the worms just absolutely love so whenever you've got corrugated cardboard in your worm bin if you peel it apart I absolutely guarantee you'll find worms in the flutes now this is not good news this is a centipede and this is the third one that I found the other two one I removed from the bin and one is still in the bin somewhere because they move so fast whereas I seem to have caught this guy napping. Now, like I said, these are not good news if you find them in a worm bin. And that's because centipedes are carnivores. They will eat baby worms and they'll also eat the cocoons. They have venom in their jaws, so, and they use their tails, they've got pinches on the tails, so they can attack from front and back and once they bite they'll inject venom to sort of paralyze and hold whatever it is they've caught and then they'll eat. If you ever find a very small worm or a baby worm or a very young juvenile that looks like it's been cut in half, literally cut in half in your worm bin, have a look for centipedes because that's what will have caused that damage most likely. Assuming you haven't shoved a th uh, throwl in there or something like that. So. So yeah, so there'll have been some losses now to these centipedes, but anyhow, you can see the pH of the cardboard starts off a bit high, but when it's settled, it settles down to seven. So again, similar to the tea bag only, it's um, completely neutral. So the worms would have been very happy with that pH. So now I've separated the bedding to one side and <clears throat> I've done one pass at counting out the worms and I've got about 350 here in the bucket so far. Sorry, I'm trying to drink a quick cup of tea at the same time because I need to go collect my daughter from the airport soon. So yeah, there's about 350 worms in there and I'm going to make another pass now at the bedding and I'm going to speed it up. As 
as you can see I've picked out the most obvious worms that I could find and I'm now at the stage where I'm trying to find all the little ones stuck between the cardboard and I think it's time to speed up here And at this stage I've lost the will to live and I've also run out of time because I need to go get my daughter like I said so there's five I stopped the count at 500 worms or oh, in the in the cardboard there's a lot more tiny little baby worms in the flutes of the corrugated cardboard so if you remember yesterday I said I would have expected to find around 600 worms my best guess is that there's easily 600 worms in this bin And if you compare these to the ones from the tea bag only worm bin, they're a lot happier, they're a lot healthier, they have a certain vibe about them, they're more lively. So definitely, for a single only medium, the worms have thrived, in my opinion, in the cardboard, and they did not thrive in the tea bag only. Um, the other thing is, you wouldn't have seen it on camera just because I sped things up so much. But there's also millions of cocoons. So I'm going to give these guys, same as yesterday, because I don't like to treat the bins differently. They, they all get treated the same way. I'm going to give these guys a melon for all the hard work. I'm going to put them in with the new bin that I put the other guys in from yesterday. And the cardboard I'm going to, the cardboard that's left, I'm going to just leave that running. I'm going to put a little bit of food stuff into it and maybe at some point in the future we'll come back and see how many worms were actually left in that cardboard only bin. So that's it for now. Definitely between tea bags and cardboard, cardboard wins. But single only mediums are not great environments for worms overall. But I'm very happy with this bin. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the little bit of fun experiment.